we have uh, just a little bit over a half hour left for us to do everything else in this episode. So I'm going to move to the two quick, uh, not too quick, actually, these are going to be uh, pretty long, probably. Um, the two TNA hot tags that we have. Yeah. Kurt Angle arrested for DWI after impact. And then, of course, the Tito Ortiz situation, which we talked a lot about this on Keeping Kayfabe. And I'm sure we're going to run down stuff about this for, you know, the, the coming future. But my quick thoughts on this. Tito Ortiz, stupid idea. I know what they're trying to do with this whole thing with Tito and Rampage Jackson. But if they released all those people just to get Tito Ortiz in there... And if you look at the reaction that they had on Twitter, which I know I said earlier, I don't really go on Twitter, but that it, it just bombed horribly. And I can't imagine the sadness that they're feeling right now because they probably expected this to be amazing. And maybe as everybody's been joking around, maybe Kurt Angle was just like, this is too much for me to handle. And <laughs> was like, maybe I'll drink and drive and get out of this fucking company. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, Kurt, Angle wa- Kurt Angle wants out. He's he's going the suicide route at this point. He wants out of that company. He's hey, like, listen. the only way that I can get out of this company before they induct me into their fucking Hall of Fame is if I kill myself. So. More like the more like the Hall of Shame, if anything. But anyways, this is a this is a good reason why you don't, you should be like me, everybody, and not watch that shitty thing on Thursday nights. <laughs> Kurt Angle be a man, oh yeah. JT77 in the chat. I can't really tell who was talking because my ears are still ringing from the pop Tito got when he came out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Someone on Twitter you. earlier today, I can't remember their name for sure, so I apologize, had said something that I think really rings true. They said, for all the people who are the TNA apologists that say, if you don't like it, change the channel, Everybody did years ago. <laughs> you know, I, I brought up on Facebook. I, I brought up this thought on Facebook. You know, they've already signed King Mo, Rampage, and Tito. At this point, when is Dixie just going to sell TNA to Bjorn Rebney? When is, he, when is Bjorn Rebney finally going to just buy up TNA and take it off of this woman's hands? Never. Bjorn Rebney is the owner of Bellator, by the, the way. The end of this episode. So they're basically the other relevant person on Spike TV. Unfortunately, hey, TNA didn't Rebney, die a while ago. I'll give Rebney credit. He built Bellator up from the ground up. Dixie just happened to, to be... What? He happened to buy up somebody else's company. Wait, wait, wait. To, to what? What did he What did he actually do? Bellator is a poor man's UFC. Well, it's the de facto number two uh, MMA promotion in America. Yeah. It, they got TV deals. They have pay-per-views. I mean, they're doing... As a company, they're doing way more healthy than TNA is. Okay, I'll give you that one. So... Uh, compared to TNA, they're they're doing a okay. Yeah, uh, it would be a step up if Bjorn Rebney bought TNA. You know what makes you know a guy that's going to be really happy about this situation, David Arquette. <laughs> now think about it. He's not the worst thing in professional wrestling anymore, right? Ooh. He can hold his head up high. You know, he's probably just wondering why Dixie Carter never actually gave him the call to come and win the TNA championship. But that's fine. That's okay. You know, David Arquette, you are now the second worst thing in professional wrestling. So I, I think you deserve a clap for that one. They, they need to wait till Scream 5 before she, before she ends up calling him. <laughs> and uh, also, the, the other big one was Lance Storm sent a tweet, which I couldn't stop laughing about on Keeping Kayfabe, which was, and the crowd goes mild. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Uh... And that's um, like Dixie Carter sent a tweet going stunned. I would like to stun her with a fucking taser, seriously. Dixie, you are so, so they're actually now go. nicknaming her Ditsy Carter. Ditsy Carter. Dipsy. Like it's boring chance. I'm upset it took them this long to get come up with Ditsy Carter. I'm sorry. Dipsy that's Carter. fairly caught very you know, right there. <laughs> My question is where where in all honesty, let, let's let's uh, put the bashing to the side. No. Uh, TNA. <laughs> my, question, my question is, where do they go? Where do they go from here with Tito? Like, where where's the end? Like, are they just gonna slot him into the Aces and Eight storyline? Like, what? Why? What's the point of bringing him in? You know, why, he's Rampage. gonna pull. No, he's gonna pull a Chael Sonnen and he's gonna buy TNA. <laughs> you know what? At this point, I'd be completely okay with that. 
Oh, God. I, I think Jenna Jameson could buy TNA at this point. Oh, I thought you were going to go with a pull-in part. joke with Jenna Jameson. She runs her own porn Ooh, company that's pretty oh, successful. Yeah. She'd be a step up from Dixie Carter. Ooh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. My favorite part was it back at the beginning of the show when Alfred over there said Tito Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> was the ending rushed? It, was, it didn't feel like it was rushed at all to me. It felt like it took forever because it was just this long shot of him standing there with his arms folded, looking like a complete jackass. The yeah, best... I, I was told he had this goofy, dumbass like grin on his face. I didn't see it, but from what I've heard, it it, it came off very, very bad. You can watch it on YouTube. It's the best comedy segment in professional wrestling. <laughs> and Aces and Eights in the main event mafia are like standing there with shit in their pants. Well, I don't know if anybody's necessarily a fan of the same kind of thing, but if you follow the uh, the TV show Iron Chef, there's a guy named Michael Simon, and at the beginning of each episode, they kind of introduce all the people, and they're all standing there with their arms folded, and I swear to God, the entire time that this was happening, Michael Simon's this bald guy with this like uh, pronounced eyebrows. They look pretty similar. And the whole time he's doing that, I'm just sitting there going, oh my god, this is like Iron Chef Michael Simon, and this is taking me out of the entire TNA thing, because I'm expecting it to be like the fucking, the guy that uh, does the whole show, and it's like, he does like a flip in the fucking beginning of it, it's real ridiculous crap. I'm expecting him to like run in and do some kind of a, you know, hit somebody with a chair or something like that, it's fucking awful. I think it's a stupid thing that they're doing, and this is just garbage, this is not going to help TNA out at all. Well, they took a dump on everybody they released by having him come out. <laughs> well, there's only one way to look at it. it. You should look at this as the way I am. It, you should have expected this. It's TNA. And there you go. I'm yeah. excited it's speeding huh? up the death of TNA. So. No, no. DNA, uh, you know, w- listen. We, we predicted, uh, well, episode 85 would be the death of TNA or something like that. We were just a, We were just a few weeks off, that's all. You know what? Episode eighty five was around the time that they started uh, releasing everybody, so maybe that yeah, was like the last. It was the beginning of the end. Right, it was. We at least got that right. I would love to be a fly wow. on the wall when every time Dixie Carter makes a stupid decision, because it literally it's like I think every time she makes a stupid decision, a kitten dies somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. I I like to think that in the background, Dixie Carter is just a mean spirited like really just shrewd woman like she puts on that that whole like oh we love our fans and everything and as soon as the cameraman yells cut she's just cursing out the production studio just nobody wants to say anything about it hey burhan yourself y'all if if you could if she just gave it i don't know why she would just give it to you but if you were given the reins to run tna would you attempt to save the company i want to know if you would uh i would you would yeah um, because it's an alternative. I was actually talking to Payne about this quite recently, where he was saying uh, he wanted me to do another like a uh, wrestling match for Keeping Kayfabe, and he goes, what match would you do? And I pointed out a match between AJ Styles and uh, Kid Cash. Uh, I believe it was a Hardcore Justice pay-per-view where they had uh, a street fight, and it was tables and everything. It was a brutal match. It was fast-paced. It told a story. Everything was included in it, and it was in TNA's heyday it was one time when the company was working with nashville before they went over to um orlando to create impact and stuff like that and it was it was awesome and then the the thing what they've done now it's just a shell of its former self you've got mickey james is probably one of the highest paid knockouts in tna at the moment you know trying to get a boyfriend a big push so they put a suit on him it's it's ridiculous and then t.o Ortiz, please what you you fire the majority of your roster and hire one guy how is that cost effective hmm. it's, Com- it's ridiculous the company at this point i believe they could have rock and cena both go there and do thrice in a lifetime and the rating would be a one for the match in the like a 1.5 maybe <laughs> <laughs> because no one wants to see that match again especially well, in tna yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. They see casually like drawn by Rock and Cena. They they draw the numbers. I mean, if they were to both go to TNA, even they wouldn't be drawing in any numbers. It's it's fucked. It really is. I have no idea what's going on with them. Is it marketing? Is it? Oh, I just don't know anymore. I, I think the yeah, problem cool. is is that they're they're just spending way too much money. You know, they they they're tr- and I think me and Jester had a comment about this. They are trying to buy respect, 
And you can do that. It just takes a very long time, and you have to be willing to put in a ton of money. That's what WCW did when Ted Turner when Ted Turner took over. You know, he put in all the money they needed, got them all the channel, you know, all, all the exposure they wanted. If they needed something, boom, Turner foot, was able to foot the bill. And over time, that did work. TNA's trying to do that out of their own pocket, and it, they're, they're just not making enough money to do that. What they need yeah. to do is go backwards, dial down, see how, see how much they can really shave off of there. And I mean realistically, in terms of like getting off the road, you know, if they have to go back to a studio, if they have to get rid of all the high-paid stars, not all of them, but, but most of them, dial back and then just rebuild from there. Kind of like what WCW was about to do back in, oh, back in 01 when Bischoff took over. Yeah, but He's going to do the terrible. exact same thing. I actually read that TNA is losing like sixty thousand dollars per show that they do on the road. Uh, six hundred like, thousand per show. How much is it? Six hundred thousand per 600, show. Six hundred thousand? Yeah. Holy God shit. damn. I, I mean, like, that's nothing. I can make that in a week just by selling out houses. God damn like it, Drew. Shut up. <laughs> if, if you can afford to go, if you can afford to throw away money like that, like a Ted Turner. More power to you. I think your show looks better. I think it does. I think Impact does look better. I don't think it looks that much better. It doesn't. Look, it barely looks better. It it has less of an indie feel on the road than it did in the Impact Zone. In the Impact Zone, it just you had all those smarky fans in there. At least in this one, you have more realistic fans coming to the shows. And you know what? It it does sound nice to hear that they're coming out of you know another town instead of just you know, some rinky dink studio in you know, in Universal Studios. It's not it, boosting the ratings, and it's costing them $600,000 a show, which is making them think faster. Like, well, the, the problem is, um, and I, I'm going to agree with Mark Madden, which I never usually do in terms of this sort of thing, they've, it's fine to go on the road, but if it's not profitable, why the fuck are you doing it? And they've been doing this road thing for nearly, what, like six months now? A Probably year, months. actually. A Good year. Point. You're doing it for a year, and it's still not profitable from the gate. So you've lost something that was canning you revenue based on someone saying, oh, brother, it'll be good on the road, brother. It's like when I play for Metallica, <laughs> brother. You know, and, and the fact is, it, it's not good. It's counterproductive. You can't waste money um, in, in terms of stuff like this. You have to look at the way, look, this is the product. This is how much money we've got. This is what we need. We've got a budget. I would rather spend that 600000 marketing someone like AJ Styles, getting him on talk shows, getting his face out there and creating new stars, than having someone like Hulk Hogan sit there on his freaking fat ass after a bubble of love sponge sex tape with like a cow or whatever they are, whatever Clem, whatever her name is, and have it to building new stars. You don't need these people. T.O. Ortiz was relevant 12 years ago. <laughs> You know, you might as well have had Ricky Ortiz in there. Seriously. And let's be honest here. You know, and here's the thing. If you're losing money and traveling, you don't want to know what common sense says. It you says stop, stop doing stop doing this stupid ass shit that you are doing and losing money. You think you think by now TNA would realize that it, they're trying these things, you're losing money. Oh, maybe we should stop and go back and let's get some money again. No, they do stupid stuff like this. They should be they should have been out like five years ago. It's, I don't even understand how they're they are still around. I don't even understand how they could sign any of this talent from WWE. I don't even understand why anyone would go there. I fucking hate TNA. I don't even watch it. I hate it. Do you know what it is? It's a paycheck. That's a paycheck. Well, so is other places, but how could TNA can even afford their paychecks? I don't even understand. Uh, it makes no goddamn sense. I will Not give the them. No, I, they can't. I, I will give them one iota of credit, and it, it, I actually thought about this last night when I was listening to the Keeping Kayfabe, uh, one of the stories that uh, Burhan brought up. TNA, I'll give them credit over WWE. I think they have a better grasp on the international market than WWE does because. TNA, what they'll do is they'll go into a market and they'll they'll partner up with whatever the biggest promotion is, and they'll work out a cross promotion deal. Whereas WWE, they'll just run into a, a a new international territory and just basically try to steamroll over them until they just kind of you know take it in. I think T, I think TNA is smarter in their international deals. I mean, you look at the deals they've had in Mexico, 
in the UK, in India, they just had that one. They just did the deal with um, the great Muda in Japan. I think, I think from an international perspective, they, they are a little more savvy than WWE is. They take their show to other parts of the world then and stop, put it, stop showing it here. They just like go show it in like Canada and Europe and wherever nah, else. I think that you need America. I think that uh, without that, it's... In the that was a... <laughs> <laughs> Jester, yeah. are you talking in the bathroom? I'm just washing my hands. No, he is. <laughs> Drew is in the bathroom. Jester, Jester, you know you were supposed to come back to your chair after you went to the restroom. You do realize this, right? <laughs> This isn't this isn't the shower hour with Chris Jester. This is this <laughs> they, is back talk. That's gonna be my that's, next show. That's on a Mega spoiler Power alert Radio. for the next Mega Powers Radio podcast. It's gonna be the shower, shower hour with Chris Jester. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this over a little Radio. bit and get the opinions of our two callers that are still on the line here. Robert, what do you think about the TO to Ortiz situation? Who? Are you still with us, Robert? <laughs> I, I I just I was like I, I still didn't even know who Tito Ortiz was and I just looked up on the uh, Impact Wrestling uh, website. Kurt Angle. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not doing anything for you either. Uh, and, and the headline says uh, Tito Ortiz shocks the wrestling world. Um, <laughs> That's for the fact that he was that live is. for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shock, all right. It was a negative shock, though. Uh, so this isn't going to make yeah, you uh, start getting into TNA, right? I never was in that. No, <laughs> probably never will be. Gosh, if TNA would, like, would, they, would be able to get John Cena, then God. TNA would, would be credible if they got like John Cena to join. It would never happen, but God, if they were able to pull that off. That would never God. happen. Uh, like I said, it would never happen. But if they were able to pull something like that off, fuck. Hmm. Randy, what do you think? <laughs> Mr. Savage? That's two in a row. Two in a row there. Uh, he He's actually, he's still in the bathroom. Um, I think the Tito thing is crap. I'll go ahead and speak for Randy Savage on this. Uh, I think it's crap. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Ooh, yeah, I speak for myself. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Tito! Tito, I'm coming for you, Tito. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about Santana there, sir. What the hell? <laughs> Santana, it's, it's, uh, never mind. That was, that was a, oh, not a good joke. That was that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if anybody is wanting to follow that up, here's your opportunity to get famous. That was bad. <laughs> Let's see if Seamus can follow it up. Seamus, what do you think? Hey, hey. What? <laughs> Braden, that was your cue. <laughs> that, that was my cue. Thirty seconds. You're a resident uh, Seamus. You're supposed to point to these people when you say their name. <laughs> do you know what makes me laugh about this question? They're they're promoting a pay per view for Bellator, right? Him, Ortis, and um, what what the other guy's name is? Rampage. Oh, Rampage. That was it. They sound like a fucking Nintendo game. Um, these guys are supposed to be fighting at this pay-per-view, and none of them are in freaking MMA shape at all. Do you notice how saggy these two look? Oh, yeah, they have them saggy titties. They had uh, Biggie Links and titties. <laughs> they ain't no, used like, to fighting anymore, fella. They're not in MMA shape at all. Wow, well, hello there. So, you're, you're, you're talking about <laughs> Bellator is supposed to be this big promotion, and how they're doing really well on pay-per-view buys, yet they got two guys who are basically over the hill... In a freaking Geratol on a pole match. Are you trying to tell us all that it only lasts 30 seconds in a fight? <laughs> yeah, oh, of course, the human believes that they only last 30 seconds in a fight. Do you know the, the oddest thing as well? Do you notice how the main event mafia all wear suits and Rampage just stands over a t shirt and a chain on? No, I, I, I've never noticed because I don't watch TNA. <laughs> just Wait, I, I thought Rampage was on, TNA, uh, on TNA's side. He's on the mafia now? He's in the main event mafia. What? Oh. He's the only mafia member who doesn't wear like uh, a shirt and a and a suit. And by the way, a special shout out to Samoa Joe. Joe versus catering. Joe is winning. <laughs> That's where yeah. he made events. That's what we discovered <laughs> last night. Man, he, he's the freaking <laughs> champion. 